Hey guys, it's Ravenhawk6910 reporting once again with podcast episode 10, the first podcast of the new year. Hope you guys had a good new year, and uh, I am a little on the tired side today, I must admit. I had to get out very early yesterday morning and uh, head down to Atlanta to Children's Healthcare Hospital because... Uh, Charlene's youngest child is going to need to have surgery to take care of a hernia that he's got, the poor little guy. So, uh, if you could just keep, uh, Charlene's youngest in your thoughts and prayers, I'd really appreciate that. Um, however, after we finished up at the hospital to get the appointment set up, we then headed over to Legacy Station. And, uh, he absolutely had a blast over there. He loved seeing all the trains. And uh, while I was there, I took care of some business while I was there as well. But we'll get to that in just a minute. But first of all, I want to talk about some stuff that I acquired at the store. First of all, I got a few pieces of track to go with the layout. Mostly because I had a few pieces that were wearing out and the sound would cut out in random spots. And, you know, continuous cleaning just wasn't doing it. So I just went ahead and replaced that one piece. And I also got a few pieces of 072 to start testing the alignment of the next curve on the other side of the room. Because eventually this year, I'm going to install the next shelf section um, that will connect to the other side of the room. And then once the new section of Miani benchwork is installed, then I will be able to have all of the benchwork finished at last on the train room. So... Very much excited to see what that's going to be, and since I got that little curve section installed, it's already, to me, looking really, really good. I mean, hey, it's not much, but it is a start anyways, so I'm very much excited for what's coming in the future this year. I really have a lot of big plans for the layout this year. I want to hunker down and get the bench work done as soon as I possibly can so that way I can actually start running trains in here instead of just on the living room floor and just do more and you know keep from doing more or less switching operations in here which is what I've been doing pretty much for the longest time but lots of progress coming in the near future but I got those pieces of track and I also picked up some old catalogs while I was there Legacy Station had a bunch of store copies of uh, their old catalogs from like MTH and Lionel and stuff like that. And I picked up a few while I was there. I really like looking through old catalogs because they're very good reference material for when something was made or when something was at least cataloged. may not have necessarily been made, but you can at least see that it was in the catalog at one point. And I also really like seeing some of the old stuff that was made. Like, uh, especially in like, uh, this is uh, from the 2013 catalog right here. This is the General, the Western and Atlantic steam locomotive from the great locomotive chase now some of you guys know that i already have the texas in my fleet however i do not have the general from this same run so sooner or later i would like to find the general as well because that version also has the proto sound 3.0 and it would really be nice to have the general along with the texas that i've had for several years now but Now that I have this, I can know exactly what catalog it came from, know exactly the part number without even having to get on the internet. So that's really cool. Other things are uh, these uh, Amtrak P42 DCs, including the heritage units, Phase 1, 2, and 3. Why they didn't make Phase 4, I don't know. Phase 4 just doesn't seem to get any love, in my opinion. But you know what? Whatever. It's MTH. It's their catalogs. That's just what they decide to do. But the one that caught my attention the most was this one here, the 2001 Volume 2 Catalog. Now, this is very interesting. This was just when MTH was starting to implement ProtoSound 2, so there's a lot of interesting stuff in here. Not to mention there's just a lot of interesting stuff in general in here. Just on the cover, you can see there's a Class J leading a freight set, which is really, really cool. That's a Rail King set. But also, there are some very interesting models in here. For example, on this page is one of my more personal favorite ones, the Seaboard Airline Baldwin Centipede AA set. Yes, MTH made a centipede long before Lionel ever did for their vision line. And even though they don't make them very much anymore, they're still very, very cool models. I would love to get one of MTH's centipedes eventually. I would like to get a centipede in general, be it from MTH or Lionel. I just love the centipede. It's such an oddball locomotive. It's huge for that matter. 
but it is just such a cool locomotive in my opinion. And then also in this catalog, if we move on to the passenger car section, you can find Amtrak Superliners that are of very interesting variety. For example, you can see the California service up on the top, but there's also the Cascades one. Now that should look a little familiar because I have a Cascades Superliner car. And yes, I'm well aware that the Cascades trains are Italian designed Talago trains, but no one is probably ever going to make a Talago train in O scale, and if they do, it's going to be ungodly expensive. So, you know what? I'm not too heartbroken about that. I can settle for these Superliners. I just really love the Cascades paint scheme, and you know, I just really love seeing stuff like this because this these were made back in a time when people weren't so picky about prototypical stuff. I mean, it was still more fun. Yeah, they still do stuff like this, but it's not as common as it used to be. Let's just put it that way. It's one of those things that you never knew what you had until it was gone, especially in my case, because I wasn't doing O scale until, you know, 2014. So none of this stuff I was even aware existed until I got into the hobby. And of course, by that time, they were long gone. So it's very nice to have these old catalogs for reference material to these things. So that way I can know that these things were at least cataloged and then I can re do research to see if they were actually shipped. Obviously in the case in the Cascades cars, they were shipped. So now it's just a matter of hunting down a few more of them and eventually an F-59 PHI or maybe even an SC-44 Charger if MTH or Lionel ever decide to make those. Please, Lionel, MTH, anyone, please. But another unusual thing about this catalog is the fact that it includes template traditions and uh, Rail King 1 scale, which is more or less G scale. But what caught my attention more than anything was this abomination, which I did not know had been made by MTH at any point in time until I saw it in this catalog. This is the number 400 AE standard gauge steam locomotive. This is an articulated 2662 steam locomotive, and holy crap, this thing looks awesome. You know, obviously there was never any articulated steam locomotives made during the pre-war or the post-war period. So it's very nice to see MTH, you know, the fact that they took creative liberties with this stuff, which this is not the first time they have done this. They've also made uh, different pieces of rolling stock as well. For example, they made a bay window caboose a couple years back, as well as a few other things. Like I believe they made a wheel transporter car, something like that. And, you know, that stuff had not been made by Lionel originally, but, you know, MTH just took some creative license and did it anyways. And this, by the way, was not during the time that Lionel and MTH had the licensing agreement. So this is not a Lionel corporate tin plate item. This is an MTH tin plate traditions item. So if you search Lionel corporate tin plate, you're not going to find it that way. You need to search MTH tin plate traditions. And I do believe this model shipped... But considering this engine was cataloged in 2001, I imagine it's going to be rather hard to find if you're into that kind of thing. And you know, who knows? Maybe one of these days if I find one at a train show and it's the right price, I might grab it for myself because that is such an oddball. And you know me, I love my oddball stuff for sure. But anyways, let's get back on subject as to why I was at Legacy Station in the first place. And that was to drop off one of my models to get fixed. More specifically, I dropped off the Southern Railway 630 to get fixed. Yes, I'm finally getting around to getting the 630 fixed. So, for those of you that don't know, when I bought the 630 last year, I got it from eBay. Got it from someone who was selling it on there. Um, got it home, test ran it, it ran just fine, and then 15 minutes after starting to run it, it broke. And what I believe happened was the piping that leads from the smoke unit to the whistle steam smoke effect leaked. And when it leaked, it caused smoke fluid to go down on top of the motor, potentially causing the motor to short out. I don't know for sure, but that is just the most educated guess that I can make. Because the engine will start up, it will make sounds, it will smoke... 
But when you turn the wheel, it will not move an inch. It's just like, forget it. It's just not happening. It's just like an engine with no innards, basically. So, um, and because this engine doesn't have a cab light, yes, this engine being so small, it does not come with a cab light. So, the standard, you know cab flashing light sequence to show you what the problem would be that you would have on a larger Lionel steam locomotive. Yeah, this engine doesn't have that. So there was no way for me to tell what was going on with it by the light flashing code. So I just had to go off of what I had. But basically, when I got the 630, this was during that time frame when I was having all of those problems with the 587. And him hawing around with Lionel trying to get them to fix it and eventually get me a replacement model. And I was so disgusted by that whole experience that I just said, screw it, I'm tired of dealing with this. And the 630 was relegated to display, basically, or sitting in its box. So I never got around to fixing it last year. And finally, this year, I decided, you know what? It's time to get that engine running again because I really love that engine. I love the 630 in general. And it was just time for me to bite the bullet and get it fixed. So I took it down to Legacy Station, and they wrote up a ticket for it. They're going to send it off to Mike Reagan to get it fixed. Yes, Mike Reagan. That name should sound very familiar to you guys. So... They're sending it off to him, and he's going to get it fixed. It's probably not going to be a cheap fix, but then again, it's probably going to be a lot cheaper compared to what my New York Central 1295 is going to cost to get fixed, because that one, I do believe the board is blown. This one, more or less, needs a new motor and some repairs to the piping going to the smoke to the whistle steam smoke effect. But we're just going to have to see what happens, you know. But I am just very happy that the process has begun to finally get the 630 operational. Because, hey, it's a small engine. It's very friendly to small curves on a layout. And I just really wanted this engine to work out and get the ball rolling again. And I really bought it, number one, because I really like the engine in general. I'm a big fan of the 630. You know, fan of the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum. And uh, I bought it knowing that and trying to restore my faith in Lionel products at the time. Because with all the stuff that was going on with the 587, I'd more or less lost my faith of Lionel. So I bought the 630 thinking, well, maybe this will give me a good shot to, you know, try, try, you know, op- you know turn a new page, try to begin something new, turn over a new, turn, or, turn over a new leaf. Jesus Christ, I can't talk today. And, uh, you know, basically just trying to see if this would work and not have the same problems. But unfortunately, (sighs) it didn't work out that way. So that's why I have not bought any other Lionel steam locomotives ever since. You know, I still have bought some Lionel products, as evidenced by my New York Central baggage car and my NS theater car. However, locomotive-wise, I haven't touched a Lionel locomotive ever since and this has been over a year so uh, well you know maybe one of these days I will consider buying more Lionel steam locomotives it's just going to depend when I was at Legacy Station I actually did see a Lionel steam locomotive that I was very much interested in and it's right here it's this Western Maryland um 2662 articulated in fact if you guys follow my channel which by the way if you have not subscribed already please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and click on the bell so you will get notifications whenever i post something but anyways in my community section on my channel i posted the picture of this originally uh last night And this is really cool. This is a beautiful locomotive. The only thing that gripes me about it is the fact that in the catalog, Lionel had just a general photo of this engine. And what I mean by that is it was just a computer-generated image. It wasn't an actual model. But the catalog photo had two headlights on the engine. There was one mounted on the face of the boiler front, and there was one mounted on the chin, if you will, below the boiler front. So you really had no idea where the headlight was going to end up. So that's why when I found out they had one of these, I was going to check it out to see where the headlight was. 
because if it was a face mounted light I like that very much compared to the chin mounted lights however as you can see here it was indeed a chin mounted light however this is still a very fine locomotive I do love the Western Maryland it's sort of been one of those railroads that has sort of been I've sort of been a closet fan of it really you know it's not really something that I model, but I've always been fascinated by it. So kind of like the uh, Baltimore and Ohio, if you will. You know, one of the sayings I like to say, if uh, I, and forgive me, I stole this from a Trains Magazine DVD, but, you know, if the Pennsylvania Railroad was Coke and the, and the New York Central was Pepsi, then the Baltimore and Ohio and the Western Maryland would be like RC. You know, everyone's second favorite railroad, if you will. But don't say anything of the sort to a true B&O fan. Anyways. But, you know, maybe one of these days I'll get brave enough and buy another Lionel Steam locomotive and hopefully it won't have nearly as much problems as I had. You know, I just had a really, just a really big string of bad luck back then. So, and looking at the New York Central Niagara that was released recently... From what I can gather, those things are fairly problem-free, so maybe Lionel is finally getting their stuff together. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll just see. You know, I really want to have my faith restored back into Lionel products. So, but anyways, I'll stop rambling because I know I do that a lot. But long story short, the 630 is on its way to Mike Reagan to get fixed, and hopefully we'll be back here in a couple of months and will be operating again and when it does that's going to be really really cool so yeah I'm very much looking forward to that and it's going to be fantastic to get that locomotive back running again and we'll just go from there but yeah that's really all I wanted to talk about today let's see what my running time is we're running at about oh 17 and a half minutes now so I may as well wrap the episode up because I don't really have too much else to talk about but Thank you guys for watching as always, and keep an eye out for more videos coming down in the future. Like I said, I'm going to be trying to work on the layout more and more this year as uh, money allows, so be on the lookout for that. I should be ordering that new section of Miani Benchwork very soon, and we'll go from there. But I can't wait to see how the layout progresses this year, because I have a feeling this year is going to be a very good year for the layout. I really hope it is. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. But anyways... I'll get off my soapbox now. I'll stop yapping. So thank you guys so much for watching as always. And I will see you guys in the next episode. And down the road, this is Ravenhawk6910 signing off.